Hello everyone. So we have already, you know, discussed the Hindu colonization in Southeast Asia in our previous episode, but that was the case study of Burma. Now we are focusing on Cambodia, the present day Cambodia. Of course, it was not called Cambodia at that time, but we will actually be seeing that how uh, the history, uh, the historical development was going on. But this is, you know, part one because uh, the process of the whole uh, historical development that how Hindu colonization happened in South Asia that is a very long episode or that is a very long chapter so I kind of divided that into two parts so this is part one and then there will be part two so let's begin so this is the initial phase as, as I have already told so we are actually getting this information that how uh, Cambodia or that was called, you know, Funan at the ancient time. How Funan was uh, basically colonized. We are getting this all information from Chinese chronicles mainly because, you know, Funan had a diplomatic relation with China at that time. And so whenever some uh, ambassador or some emissaries from Cambodia or Funan went to China, they kind of recorded it because China, you know, had a very... Uh, I mean, very important tradition of preserving uh, the historical uh, information or historical data. So whatever we are learning in this chapter, we are getting to know that was, uh, I, I mean, unearthed or that has been known from this Chinese chronicles. So as I am, uh, I have already said that Cambodia was called Funan at that time, F-U-N-A-N. And also we are going to see that how it was called Khmer culture. And all these terms are actually uh, corruption of uh, many terms. Like the first Hindu king was called Kondinya. As you can see that the name Kondinya is very similar to Kotilya, isn't it? But uh, I think that will be helpful for remembering the name. That the first Hindu king who came from India, who uh, the legend says that he came from India, his name was Kondinya. Hmm. He ruled mainly over, you know, Cochin, Chin and South Cambodia. And he kind of, uh, it was said that this is very important that how this Kondinya brought civilization into Funan. Because it has been said that before the arrival of Kondinya, there were people who were mainly tribals, uh, quote unquote tribals, because uh, they were, uh, they did not, didn't know anything about the civilization. They did not wear cloth. They were always naked. So it was Kondinya who kind of brought the civilization into this Funan region. Again, I am telling that this can be a very uh, regressive that how uh, the Hindus, it, it has been said that Hindus brought civilization, but this is actually what the inscriptions are saying. This is not my interpretation. Uh, this has been, you know, written in the inscription and the chronicles that how Kondinya uh, he and with his other followers went from India to Funan and then he kind of introduced the civilization. And this is one of the photo, you know, Kondenda, the present architecture in uh, the Cambodia region. Then the next thing, I mean, after Kondenda, there came Fun Che Man. But many said that this is this fun, F-A-N, is basically a corruption of Burman. So we actually are very familiar with the title called Burman, which is very affluent or very popular in present day India also, because uh, the title Burman is all, always there. But uh, many are saying that the fun is actually a corruption of Burman. The next king was Fan Chan, and maybe it was basically Chandan, historians are saying. So uh, these basically this part is not very uh, I'm not saying that these are very important points but just you have to mention or you have to remember the names that there was Fan Che Man then there was Fan Chan who can be called Chandan also but they all kind of sent embassy to China and India they had cordial relation with China as well as India. Uh, Su Wu was sent to India during the Fan Chan reign. Uh, who reached port of Takula and then Ganges. So all the eastern trading activities were happening. The ambassadors were coming from Cambodia, I mean, coming from the that uh, Funan region. And they were, you know, uh, like this Suvu, he lived here for, here means India. He lived here for four years until his return to Funan. Uh, 
there was also next king who was called fan siam during whose reign the chinese ambassador kang tai who is very important because uh, he came to funan and wrote extensively about the hindu kings in cambodia or hindu kings in funan whatever you say uh, you don't have to remember all these uh, name very carefully but you know just to have a brief idea that how in this initial years these uh, emissaries or embassies from china and india uh i mean for, uh, to china and india from funan that was happening and uh, they had a cordial relationship with uh, these two regions i mean in east there was china in west there was india so that is actually happening then if you look uh, at the next slide you know the reign of jayavarman kondeniya this is very important but again uh, i am repeating uh there is another king there there will be many king in this uh, history of cambodia named as jayavarman please do not you know uh be confused about that so this is the first king who is jayavarman kondia and we will be uh, having a brief overview that what has uh, been done during his reign but uh, this is you know jayavarman kondenia but there are you know jayavarman 2 3 4 there are many kings uh you know uh, uh named jayavarman so jayavarman kondenia he sent merchants to canton region for trading purpose so canton region is basically in uh, china this trade journey this is like a very interesting story you can remember it you know like a na- narration that jayavarman kondenia he sent merchants to canton for trading purpose and this trade journey was accompanied by you know indian monk nagasena like nagasena a monk he came from india and he said that uh, jayavarman kondenia when he was sending uh, ambassador and merchants to canton to, to china nagasena was saying that i will be accompanying uh, the you know the team but on the way back from china a storm forced them to land in champa champa was another neighboring region of funan or cambodia the chams that is the residents of champa this this chams people looted them that is looted nagasena and the uh, you know uh, these uh, merchants of jayavarman so jayavarman was very furious about this plunder and he asked nagasena to you know revisit china chinese king woody in order to seek help for, to defeat chams because you know jayavarman kondenia uh, he could not do it uh, alone he needed the help he needed the help of china so he asked nagasena to visit china again and ask for help so they can uh, you know collectively defeat the people of champa because you know they have already plundered them but again some years later jayavarman sent another embassy to china because uh, this time the chinese uh, refused to give any uh, help and you know we find that how jayavarman sent a, a buddha image made of coral also buddhist monks like mandra sena and sanghapala were sent to china and they were responsible you know for translating many buddhist uh, text into chinese like vishuddha magga vishuddha magga is very important as an uh, as a buddhist text as you all know so this sanghapala was uh, responsible for translating buddhist text like vishuddha magga into i mean from he uh, translated them into chinese okay so this photo as you can see that this is uh, vishuddha magga one of the important buddhist text so this this phase was actually the in uh, we can see that influence of buddhism was happening in china and you know how jayavarman and how this part of cambodia played an important part in it okay so if we go to uh, this next slide jayavarman's wife was called you know kula prabhavati but their son the uh, son of kula prabhavati and jayavarman they did not succeed at the throne it was the son with concubine named rudravarman who ascended the throne uh f- there are many sanskrit inscription uh, from which we came to know that he like his father he mean rudravarman like his father also sent embassy to china like six times but the most important thing about rudravarman's reign is that that during rudravarman's reign the kingdom of kambuja that is the north cambodia 
previously it was a vassal state of Khmer, uh, I mean Khmer region, Khmer dynasty means it was a vassal state of the Kondinyas. But now they kind of became very powerful, this Kambuja, and they invaded the Kondinyas, right? They invaded the Rudravarman. So this is now uh, the beginning of a new episode in the history of ancient Cambodia that how Kambuja would be taking over Funan, right? The whole region, we, are actu we were actually learning that how, you know, Kondinya dynasty, it was initially very you know, uh, they were kind of, uh, they were powerful enough. But during the time of Rudra Varman, as we will see that Kambuja will take over. The, what is the Kambuja? What is the history of this Kambuja kingdom? Kambuja kingdom was actually, you know, founded by Kambu Sayambhuva, who was also the king of Aryadesha, India. So as we can see that there were multiple migration, you know, one into Cambodia. One part was Kambuja, which was the northern part. It was there Kambu Sayambhuva founded Kambuja kingdom, but there was also, you know, uh, this uh, Kondinya who kind of ruled over Cochin Chin and South Cambodia. So as I was saying that there were many migration and there were many separate chiefs and feudal chiefs who were uh, ruling over different parts of Cambodia. So initially, South Cambodia was ruled by Cordelius, but, but the North Cambodia had Kambuja kingdom. But from this time, that is from, uh, you know, 4th, 5th century AD, Kambuja kingdom will be taking over all of the Cambodia. How? That is, we will going to see. As I, I was saying, Kam Kambuja kingdom was actually founded by Kambu Sayambhuva, the king of Aryadesha. There was also two other uh, kings like Sruta Varman, Sreshta Varman. And they kind of broke away from the uh, Khmer Empire. Khmer Empire, not Khmer Empire, sorry, this will be, you know, Kondinya. Okay, so in 6th century, Bhava Varman, he was actually, he came to the throne of Kambuja and transferred the capital to Bhavapura. And the brother of Bhava Varman, Mahindra Varman, he basically attacked Funan and conquered nearly whole of it. So, this Mahendra Varman, he was responsible that how Kambuja was taking over all of Funan by overthrowing the Kodenya dynasty, right? Now to, you know, uh, to move further, after Mahendra Varman, Ishana Varman was there who came to throne and founded the new capital called Ishanapura. He also had diplomatic relation with China and India. But the main thing is, this is the time when Funan will be passed into oblivion and Kambuja will be the main center of power. This is very important. And one of the most important ruler of this whole ancient Cambodia is Jayavarmana II. As I was saying, please do not confuse Jayavarmana II with Jayavarmana Kondia. Sorry. Uh, this man, this is basically, he belonged to Kondinya dynasty. And Jayavarman too, he is basically from, you know, uh, as I was saying, he was from <clears throat> this, he was from this Kambuja kingdom. So Jayavarman too is very important. Why? He belonged to 9th century AD because he kind of politically unified all of Cambodia because none of the Kondinya dynasty rulers were able to do it. So political unification of all of Cambodia by Jayavarman II. Initially for a few years, he kind of lived in Java, that is the neighboring country. And then he came back to, you know, Kambuja. After his return, he invited an Indian Brahmin called Hiranya Dama from India. This part is very important. This episode is important because that is how, you know, Cambodian people still nowadays you know, claim their legacy, claim their history. So this is very important, Jaya Varman. That initially for a few years, he lived in Java and then came back to Kambuja. But after his return, he invited the Indian Brahmin called Hiranyadama, who was uh, actually, who had, who was Hiranyadama, was obviously a Brahmin, but he had his chief priest called Sh Shiva Kaivalya. And they together performed rituals of Tantric Shaivism, Indra Mahendra Parvat. Mahendra Parvat is a very important region in Cambodia. 
and this whole ritual made him the sovereign king so this thing that how mahendra parvat uh, witnessed a ritualistic ceremony of tantric shaivism by hiranyadama by the shiva kaivalya par uh, Uh, priest this is this episode is very important that how jayavarman is actually claiming the political sovereignty over all of the uh, cambodian region because apart from the military uh, you know conquest it was also very important to claim the uh, sovereignty to claim the supremacy by performing this religious rituals you know so this is basically jayavarman i have also put a kind of photo now jayavarman to move further we are getting all these references of ritual ceremony like in uh, the mahindra parvat from a famous inscription it is very important written in khmer language this inscription is written by shiva kaivalya family that i have told that he was a chief priest uh, and has been in the present day thailand temple named prasad dok kok thom temple uh, this name can be a little confusing but if you can see the picture i think uh, it will be a little you know easy for you to understand this this is basically a temple in present day thailand but uh, it has been you know believed legend says that here from here an inscription has been found which has been written in khmer language and this inscription is saying that how jayavarman how this jayavarman you know performed this tantric shaivism rituals in mahendra parvat and claimed himself as the supreme king so this inscription from this uh, particular prasad kok temple is very important jayavarman and but why this episodes of you know rituals and religions are important because jayavarman probably did not ascend the throne by heredity so the ritual ceremony at mahendra parvat was to reclaim his sovereignty and also he you know changed his capital many a times first it was mahendra parvat where the ritual happened then it was indrapura then it was amarendrapura and finally it was hariharalya and he was doing all of this change and shifting of capital perhaps because of the political instability that was happening but after all you know he managed to overcome and unified the whole of cambodia but one of the most important thing apart from the fact that he kind of politic you know, unified the whole region is that he introduced tantric shaivism and was given that given the title parameshwar after his death so this is a very brief overview about the uh, political career and the religious uh, developments during the time of jayavarman ii who has been you know called the founder of uh, the ancient cambodian uh, kingdom so this was a ve- this is a very brief uh, this is a very brief uh, kind of episode but we will be coming back to the next part of it that how this uh, you know this kambuja empire how they will be uh, an important episode in the history of ancient cambodia we will be saying that and for that please uh, switch on to the next video thank you